Following interviews and commentaries are for entertainment only. The views and opinions expressed therein are those of the individual speakers and do not necessarily represent the views and opinions of Sheranian Communications, KHQN, or Utah Valley Live. Hi, this is Pat Sheranian. Thank you so much for joining us today. You can tell I've got some really interesting guests. Well, you don't know they're interesting, but I will tell you they're interesting guests. And they are professionals, amateur, beginners, long timers, lots of information. And I'm going to turn it over to them today, which is really fun. I get to sit and watch them, and I can give them a flash 10 or 2 or 3. Okay, so I'm glad you're with us on the, the Internet and also on our local radio station. Thank you so much for joining us. And we're going to start by introducing Sydney first. Hi. Hi, I'm Sydney O'Reilly, author of the 12-Week Challenge, which is a, a life balance program based on prioritized values. And I'm Leonard O'Reilly, her <laughs> husband, and uh, I'm a musician. I play a vibra harp, and uh, we love talking about health and how we can better ourselves. I guess that's all I can say. Huh? <laughs> and well, better, better be more to say. <laughs> oh, <yes. laughs> and I'm Kim Lee Mueller. I uh, just moved here three weeks ago tonight. It'll be three weeks ago that I moved here from Chicago, and I count uh, um, the O'Reillys and also Pat as, as great friends of mine. So happy to be here. And she is a professional in the business, and she's going to tell you more about it, and very accomplished, and uh, you're in good hands. So have a wonderful hour, and uh, I'll be listening and watching. And coming, I'm hoping, too. <laughs> well, this is a, a pleasure being here. Uh, it was short notice, that, so we, we're just going to ramble a little bit. I hope we have some interesting things to say. Uh, I don't want to say too much. My wife is the one who's always spoken at uh, groups. And, of course, Kim has professionally done this back east for a long, long time. So she really knows the stuff. <laughs> you just didn't come with anything in hand to talk about. Is that no, right? no, actually, I didn't. I uh, uh, just found out about this a few minutes ago, so <laughs> we'll <laughs> kind of fun. play it by ear, it sounds We're like. We're going to have yeah. fun then. <laughs> 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 well, what do we want to talk about? Well, let's, you brought some things. Well, to okay. I, you know, I, I'm going to... I'm going to throw out something kind of interesting. Where is that one that I... Oh, yes, right here. This just came off the Internet today, and this is just the kind of... Oh, um, i get this ready a little bit. The, the title of this is, Our Government Purposely Keeping Us Fat to Control Us? I can imagine somebody saying that. This is from an article called, or a, a website called Political Outcast. I guess it would be politicaloutcast.com. Anyway, could it be that the government wants us fat? If we're fat, we're, we'll all have health issues. If we have more health issues, we'll need more health care. If we need more health care, the government will be there to supply it. Once the government supplies all our health needs, we'll always vote for more government. Does that sound like what's going on nowadays? What do you think? Oops. Well, you know, Kim has a lot of experience with weight loss. She said quite oh, a <laughs> more experience than I want. Um, yeah, well, I recently lost 48 pounds, That's and um, I'm much happier thinner. Um, I tended to be a nervous eater. Uh, you know, when you're a little depressed, when you're not feeling good about yourself, when you're nervous, um, a lot of people say that they're too upset to eat, they're too depressed to eat, they're too nervous or anxious to eat. And if that were my, if I reacted like that to stress, I would be skin and bones. I am the opposite. I tend to eat when I am nervous or upset or stressed. Mm -hmm. So that's something that I've had to really uh, learn how to curtail and and change. And uh, oh, can you tell actually, us? it was through Weight Watchers Online though that I. Uh, but I've lost 48 pounds. Well, so. you know, even with people using a system like Weight Watchers, you still have to co overcome the nervousness and the yeah. stress. How did you do that? Well, with me, it's a sugar thing mostly. I really, really love sugar. I love cookies and candy and pie. And, and, and not only love to eat them, but love to make those things. Oh, and yeah. one of my favorite things to do on a Sunday after church, I come home and say, okay, now what can I make? And I'd make a pie or a cake or whatever. It 
possibly helped or hurt, I'm not sure which, a little bit that, that I raised two kids who don't really care about sugar. Oh. Um, oh, my right. daughter from birth never really liked chocolate. And I oh once asked gosh. the pharmacist, uh, gosh, I have this little girl and she and, and she doesn't like chocolate. And I can't believe that, that she's my child not liking chocolate. And he said, oh, she'll probably grow out of that. And I said, really? <laughs> and he, he said, well, have you ever known a woman that doesn't like chocolate? So <laughs> so now she's uh, going to be 20, actually, in, in about three weeks. And, and she's uh, beautiful. She she's a beautiful still, girl. Well, thank oh. you. She still is not a big chocolate eater. And even my son, um, they won't finish a chocolate bar. You know, and I could polish off four or five of them, oh, I'm yeah. sure, you know. But yeah, this is interesting. And they, I gave up long ago making uh, birthday cakes for them. We would sometimes really? have a birthday pie. My son likes lemon meringue pie. My oh, daughter wow. really, I don't know what I fixed for her. She, we didn't even have birthday cakes when they were growing up wow. because they don't eat cake. But I, the reason why I bring that up is I would make a cake and I'd eat the whole thing, or I'd make a pie and they'd have one little teeny piece and they were done. Or even brownies and they'd be excited that I'm making brownies and after one piece they wanted no more. So guess who finished the brownies? Oh, so, yeah. so I learned to <laughs> kind of to yeah. Right. <laughs> so I learned to kind of just uh, not do that anymore because there was no one you know else that would eat it but me. And it, it was something I really enjoyed, but I kind of gave it up. And and that was even before the whole. Food Network. All my friends watch Food Network, and oh, they're all. Yeah. Whenever I get together, they're talking about, "Oh, did you see this and that? And Ace of Cakes, and and what was that Chopped guy? You know, the Chops oh, yeah. show." And and I said, I really can't watch all those because I gained fifty pounds just from wanting to make all that stuff. Oh, yeah. You know, and I'm just saying you don't cook or bake because that's part of our life. You know, and I oh. still enjoy it, but I think I've had to learn to replace that with other things. I think, and just um, you know. Oh, how so. did you overcome the stress eating part? Well, I think that if, at least for me, and I don't know if it's for everyone, but if I can get by the first five days of not eating the candy and the cookies oh, and the good. sugar, yeah. after about five days, then the craving isn't there anymore. Oh, good point. You know, and, and I would eat like a... a um, sugar-free or a Weight Watcher or cookie or dessert or treat, and then I was done with just the one portion, and then until the next day, I didn't really crave it anymore. I don't huh. know if it's, you know, the... The sugar that that's in regular things that isn't in the the locale or, or sugar free things, oh, yeah. but um, I learned that if I would just have a little bit, then that would trigger that again, and I'd want it, want it, want yeah. it. So, just staying off it after about if I hit that five day peak, then then I was good. But the first five days is horrible. <laughs> so I'm going to ask a question. Sure, go ahead. Good? Sorry, yeah. <laughs> uh, you mentioned the sugar free or the what do they call it the. What, what was the other word? Well, like a Weight Watcher brand or yeah. a, yeah, no, So like what a, kind of sugar do they use then? Yeah, um, I don't know, but I buy these cookies that are not Weight Watcher brand cookies. They're just a, a shortbread cookie. They're round with a hole in the middle. They're shortbread, and and um, they're not a Weight Watcher product, but I can have eight of them for four Weight Watcher points, which is okay, with with, with a cup of skim milk at night, and, and it really made me happy. And uh, I looked at the, I don't know, I'd have to look at the, at the, ingredients. At the ingredients, but I I think they're just a, a shortbread cookie, and I think shortbread cookies inherently are, I think, less sweet. Less yeah. sugar. And so, yeah, and these are actually sugar-free. My uh, concern, of course, anytime I hear the word sugar-free, you wonder what they're substituting the for that sugar, right? Yeah. Sugar in. right. Uh, well, and I eat a lot of fruit. I mean, fruit is free on well, the program yes. I was doing, and so uh, it was just nice to know that I I ate a lot of oranges right. and. Uh, and now in the summer, of course, we're oh, great because yes. we have so yeah. many yeah, choices. Kind of so I've had some great peaches. Oh, yes. Love peaches. I think my favorite fruit is probably a peach, but it has to be a good peach. I'm kind of a oh. peach connoisseur because there's a lot wait, of peaches that aren't you, too good. Yeah. yeah, wait till you get yeah. into the local Utah peaches. Oh, right. oh Utah peaches are so wonderful. Well, nothing here. better than a great peach. Oh, but, oh, so yeah. And then, of course, the you know the cantaloupe and the strawberries and the blueberries and all those things that are really good for you. And uh, you kind of replace those and eat those instead of the... Cookies right. and cakes yes. and pie. And well, candy. what happened to your stress? I mean, um, what? Well, you know, <laughs> it's a funny thing. One of the things I was most stressed about was being overweight. So, <laughs> so as the weight goes down, I think uh, I was less stressed okay. because I'm sure it's not this way for everyone, but for me, it seemed to affect every. And not only the weight and the way I looked, but the way I felt because uh -huh. I was eating too much and yeah. didn't, just didn't feel well. Mm -hmm. And that stressed me out. So as my weight went down, I wasn't as stressed out. There's still other things that I get stressed out about, but the overlying umbrella or dark cloud over the whole stress was the fact that I wasn't controlling yeah. my eating. Yeah, And, as and once women, that was under control, I yeah. think I was better. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 
As yeah. women, I think that affects us more than we think it does, I, especially in this culture. It's really sad, yeah. I think, because we get on the scale in the morning, and if we've gained a pound, we feel terrible. Right. You know, colors the whole day. Especially since sugar was my drug of choice, I think that it just, uh, not only with my... The physical part of it, but the mental part oh. of it, I was just like crazy all the time. Believe you know? me, I yeah. understand that. Leonard has some great things to say about refined sugar and the yeah. effects of it. Yeah, so this this uh, article here is from San Francisco uh, State University or uh, California State, whatever it is. But anyway, mm -hmm. it's interesting what they have to say. In a paper published in Nature on Wednesday, they, are, they argue that increased global consumption of sugar is primarily responsible for a whole range of chronic diseases that are reaching epidemic levels around the world. And yeah. I can really attest to that. I mean, uh, we're, we're uh, in some places of the world, they just don't have that much sugar, and they're healthier than we are. And we're an enlightened society, are we? And we're supposed to really be well off? But right. we're killing ourselves with sugar. Like it says here, um, uh, we eat, over here, er Americans eat and drink roughly 22 teaspoons of sugar every day triple what they consumed three decades ago, and most people aren't even aware of the various ways sugar sneak into their diets, often via breads and cereals and processed foods. Terms that identify sugars on labels include sucrose, mm -hmm. glucose, fructose, maltose, hydrocid, whatever that is, starch, and invert sugar, corn syrup, and honey. And of course, the big one that you have to really look for because we uh, like to look at labels on everything. Mm -hmm. We never take anything that has a high fructose corn syrup. It's poison. We might get back to that. But and things that we don't realize has a high sugar content. You don't you don't right. think of it. They do. Yeah. Well, yeah. Sure. How about weenies and ketchup? <laughs> yeah. And French fries. You right. Know. Right. Oh my goodness. McDonald's I think has a sugar in just about everything they serve there. And yeah. it's just unbelievable why they would have sugar in French fries. Oh you know, and people tend to take it lightly. But we just can't. I mean, I, I, like you mentioned, you know, it not only affects you physically, but I know for myself it affects me, uh, affects my brain chemistry. Right. And we see it more and more with the childhood obesity, which, oh, uh, yeah. you know, seems to be such an issue now. I'm a, I'm kind of a Jay Leno fan, and I like to watch his monologues at night before I go to bed, and almost every night he says, how fat are we when blah, blah, blah. You know, he's, you know, oh, it well. seems like he always makes fun of the latest offering it, that Burger King has, you know. Oh, yeah. You know, a three <laughs> patties bacon, and, and yeah. eight slices of bacon or whatever, yeah. you know. And, yeah. and uh, he jokes about it, but it's a real problem. It is. How fat are we when, you, you know, and then he'll say some joke, you know. But yeah. it's true. Oh, it's true. It is. Yeah. And, you know, Leonard and I choose, rather than pour money into medical insurance or medical visits and things, we take that same money and put it into um, healthy food and and supplements and things like that. Because that's the argument. A lot of the organic, uh, uh, exactly. it's, it's a shame, but the organic <coughs> foods, the things that are good for you are always more expensive. Yeah. But you know what? That's what they say, but it really comes out costing less when you don't have to pay all the, well, all the bills. Medical bills, I guess. I mean, but that, yeah. Yeah. People Leonard, don't think that yeah. far down the road. But Well, Leonard and I, are, are neither one of us are on any medications. Mm -hmm. You know, and... and uh, I haven't been to the doctor in over eight years, and Leonard has been rarely. But And since we changed our diet... You know, aches and pains disappeared. My eyesight has improved. Mm -hmm. You know, I went to the ophthalmologist, and I didn't need new glasses. In fact, my eyesight had been gotten better. I mean, That's it's just, improved. Yeah. we're mm -hmm. just, we feel so blessed, but we know that a great deal of it has to do with the dietary changes. Right. And that's one reason we're so passionate, right. because people don't recognize the mental and physical effects of refined foods, and particularly sugar and white flour. It is a shame. I remember even being a BYU student a uh, long time ago and standing in front of a vending machine, and and the apple was more expensive than a bag of chips, and or a candy bar, or yeah. you know, or a thing of yogurt is more expensive than uh, you know a bag, a little bag of candy. And I just remember thinking, wow, that's not fair. Well, <laughs> you know, one of the reasons that is is because the government has subsidized uh, grains uh, like corn mm -hmm. and made it so cheap. That it's right. you know cheaper for manufacturers to make products out of corn than it is to do other things. So when you're buying something organic, you're buying something that's priced the way it should be. Right. And that's why. And in the long run, really, it doesn't cost you more. It doesn't take longer, you know, to to use organic foods. You can buy a 25 pound bag of organic whole wheat flour at Costco. You know, mm -hmm. and when you buy it in that quantity and stuff and use it for your baked goods and things, it's so much better for you. 
Yeah. So, you know, uh, as we talk about sugar, since we seem to be much on that subject, uh, what is, where is it that the people, most people get most of their sugar? Yes. <laughs> the soft drinks? Soft oh, drinks. Oh, the danger. Yeah, do I get pop. a prize? <laughs> <laughs> it's just unbelievable what's, what's going down their throats and all the soft drink stuff. And like this article I have here talks about some people think that they're hydrating themselves by drinking lots of pop because we're told we should drink a lot of water. Right. But they're doing them some more, themselves more harm than they're doing good when they drink all that pop. It's a, unbelievable how much pop. And, and you see people walk out of stores with cases of pop and the kids can have as much as they want. Yeah. I, I was thinking you're going to say something there. No, no. no just okay. I, I was thinking guilty, but I thought I'd better <laughs> not say that. <laughs> do, do you still partake of pop? I might partake of pop once in a while. Yeah. Once in a while, mm -hmm. okay. Uh, you know the the diet, but uh, once in a while, yeah. Mm -hmm. But the diet, of course, that mm -hmm. might have I know. aspartame. I know. <laughs> what was well, that one? Yeah. What are they called? Oh, Splenda. Splenda. Yeah, all those so things. Are, I mean, do you realize yeah. some of those things turned a poison inside your body, like mm -hmm. formaldehyde. You know, formaldehyde is what they put your body in when they when they prepare you for burial. Right. Formaldehyde. The preservative. And, yeah. And that mm -hmm. stuff turns into formaldehyde inside your body. Well, you know, we've uh, actually created some natural sodas that you can put together at home, really easy. I mean, does, you know, it takes less than a minute, and you've got really delicious natural soda. You don't have to feel guilty about. Yeah. Okay. Great. Yeah. So let's talk about some alternatives to sugar. Um, what are they? Name some of them. Oh, there's a xylitol. Have you ever heard of that? No, not that oh, one. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, um, it's made of uh, birch trees, mm -hmm. and it's, um, it's very sweet, but it, if, you know, they put it in toothpaste and things now because it actually is good for your teeth. Oh, uh-huh, good. Okay. Yeah. Matter of fact, the... The, the mints that I take right now has xylitol in them, and it, and it helps your teeth, strengthen your teeth. And then, of course, there's good old-fashioned honey. There's nothing wrong mm -hmm. with honey, but some people think that just because you're having honey, you're getting too much sugar. It's not well, the case, Well, you know, you, even though it's, if you take too many, too much sweet of anything, oh, yeah. it's probably not good for you. But, sure. But well, anything, too much of anything, not good for yeah. you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Interestingly, just recently I read, uh, like two or three weeks ago, uh, that um, one of the major major manufacturers of soda pop is actually going to start using stevia stevia oh no i do have that in my cupboard i have oh, that on my shelf yes yeah. and i am familiar with stuff. that mm -hmm. yeah it doesn't raise your raise your yes. what do you call hypoglycemic that is level. on in my cupboard yes yeah and yeah. that's so much better and all of a sudden when they announced that stevia all of a sudden became a a real hot issue on the on the what do you call it, stock, stock market. Exchange. I don't buy okay. stocks, but but it all of a sudden was really popular because they had to buy a lot of that mm -hmm. to change over from regular sugar. They're realizing that sugar is going to be the thing to get away from one day, and they're going to go ahead and start using that in their products, and that that's going to be fantastic. Now ourselves, we just like uh, organic blue agave. Uh, agave. Now some people say that agave does raise your hypoglycemic level, that's when it's manufactured in the wrong way. So the one we use is right here local here in Utah. It's manufactured in, in, in Mexico, but it's brought here and bottled here in Linden called Zagavi with a Z in front, like a xylophone, you know, it starts with a Z. Mm -hmm. Zagavi. Z-A-G-A-V-E. That's what we use to sweeten. On our way home today, we'll buy another gallon of that. Is it liquid then? Yes, yes. liquid. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's just really, really uh, good for you. We make, we make our ice cream uh, out of it and everything. Oh yeah, it doesn't affect my brain chemistry at all, mm -hmm. like the refined sugar. The other thing uh, about it is if you go to their website and you type in the word RESET in capital letters, if you go to Zagavi, Z-A-G-A-V-E dot -E com, and, and where the coupon code is, if you put in, in capital letters, R-E-S-E-T, you can get a 5% discount. Or was it? Might even be more. I think it's five percent. I can't remember. Yeah. <laughs> so, but it's a nice way to give it a try without having to spend the full amount. And if you ever need recipes, you can just email me at sydney at um, resetyourlifeforgood dot com, and uh, I'll send you recipes. And I've made I've done all kinds of stuff with agave. In fact, this morning we made. Um, Peach freezer jam. Oh, yes. So just, well. it's just delicious. We need to take a break right now. We'll be okay. back in a couple of minutes. So take it away, Mr. Engineer. <laughs> I'm 
Roger Strong. I'm here to tell you about tidbits of Utah County. No death, divorce, devastation, or destruction, just good news for good people. You'll find us everywhere in Utah Valley, in doctor's offices, restaurants, mechanic shops, anywhere that people wait. We have over 35 features of fun, family-friendly entertainment. To find a paper or to advertise, call Roger at 801-616-6288. Again, that's Roger at 801-616-6288. Or tidbits of Utah County, the happy paper for Happy Valley. Are you an athlete looking for a natural boost to your workout? Have you studied up on the benefits of nitric oxide production to your performance? Then you'll want to try Kayani's Nitro Extreme. Nitro Extreme promotes cardiovascular health and improved blood flow supports muscle contraction and relaxation, as well as nerve transmission. I use Nitro Extreme right before I lift weights, and I've never been stronger in my entire life. If you don't try Nitro Extreme, you'll never know what you're missing. Call 801-362-9552 to order yours today. That's 801-362-9552. Well, we're back. Thank you. Uh, well, let's see. Where did we end off? Well, we were talking about the dangers of pop, and you know, uh, uh, I'll just give the highlights from the sheet here. It causes invisible fat buildup around your organs. Now, what was that we were reading on the way here? By the way, talking about that fat is not as important as how much sugar is in your body. Yeah, they were actually saying that uh, there are people that have more health issues that are thin than some people who are fat, and they really feel like those health health issues are a result of increased sugar intake. Yes. Yeah. So that's one of the things that that we talk about. Uh, Some uh, drinks, pop, has toxic flame retardants in it. Uh, Yuck. (laughs) Yeah, it's uh, like in Mountain Dew. It's to keep the artificial flavoring from separating from the rest of the liquid. So they throw it in there just to make it stay nice. You know? <laughs> oh, my goodness. And you're taking part of the biggest science. You're taking part in the biggest science experiment on the planet by taking in this high fructose corn syrup. See, they never had any kind of studies done on high fructose corn syrup ever, and we're, therefore, the experiment. And they're going to find out that that's one of the worst things people are taking in way, way too late. They should have really got it all together way before now. I'm just happy you're calling it pop because I thought that the, I came here three weeks ago from Chicago and I thought that was more of a Midwestern thing, uh, a term. And, you know, whenever I would say pop out of the Midwest, people didn't really know what I was talking about. They yeah. would call it soda or soda pop. Or To me, oh. soda is a uh, thin milkshake, fizzy yeah. milkshake thing oh, yeah. from the 1950s, you know, oh, yes, the, yes, when yes, you had your pool right. skirt on and your, uh, oh, yes. you know. But, uh, yeah, pop is, is, is what I call it. I didn't know that was a, a Utah. I didn't think you went back to the 50s yourself. I thought that was a thing for us, but you're younger. Yeah, well, no, but but you I've seen it in movies. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen movies and, uh, and, 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 and uh, um, Happy Days, you know, oh, yeah. TV days, shows yes. like that. Yeah. Kim, why yeah. don't you tell us a little more about your background? Yes. Um, I, this is interesting, very really interesting. I graduated uh, from BYU in broadcast news with a, with an emphasis, they called it back then, I'm not sure they still do, in uh, uh, communications with an emphasis in broadcast news. Cool. And I did an internship. I had my choice of an internship at uh, Good Morning America at the time, uh, UPI Network or Associated Press Network in Washington, D.C. Wow. And I chose Associated Press in Washington, D.C., Cool. Uh, and it was supposed to be a six-week internship, and after about three weeks, they I was hired, stayed there um, uh, as a reporter slash news person. They called it news person, which um, one day we'd be on the street reporting, another day we'd be in-house uh, taking stories from our international correspondents and getting them ready for the air. Bye. Another day I might be a news desk, desk supervisor where mm-hmm. we would coordinate uh, correspondents around the world when, when something happened and we needed coverage, um, like the John, Letting, John Lennon being assassinated. I was on the desk that night. And, uh, wow. and uh, the, uh, during the Iran hostage crisis, uh, worked through all that. And, and uh, anyway... Um, State Associated Press until I served a voluntary mission for the church in South America. And while I was on doing that, mm. both my bosses from Associated Press were no longer there and one had moved on to Voice of America Network. Ah. 
mm. which is uh, what the military listens to overseas. Yeah. And uh, so uh, my favorite of my two bosses from Associated Press hired me on at Voice of America, and I, and I was there writing news for broadcast, uh, yeah. especially... Um, taking um, stories that came across the wire in Spanish, Italian, and French and, and, and translating them into English, you into English stories. Them? Sure, sure, sure. Oh, I mean, I just spoke Spanish in South America, but I could get by in French, Italian, and Really? Yeah. Sure. That's so fascinating. It, 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 I couldn't speak them. They all came out Spanish, but to write <laughs> them and translate the written language was similar enough that I could write the English stories from oh, the wonderful. from those um, foreign language broadcasts, and and so worked at uh, Voice of America there. Mm -hmm. And where was that out of? Uh, off Washington. Washington D.C. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Wow. And that mm -hmm. went all around the world. Yes. Uh huh. The the the. the uh, Associated Press was all around the United States, and my relatives in Illinois and California yeah. used to hear me on the radio. And uh, uh -huh. and then uh, mm -hmm. Voice of America was um, strictly, um, well, military bases. I guess it might have been military bases in the U.S., but it was especially for those uh, military personnel that were overseas. Mm -hmm. Well, it was mainly for, oh, I, thought, I always thought the Voice of America was to get our propaganda, if you want to call it, <laughs> out to uh, the rest of the, wor the world, you know, but that was just... For well, I was only people. involved in the news part of it. I'm not sure what the other content was, but oh, uh, but that it. was my understanding, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, and then somehow I veered out of uh, media itself and veered into media sales and have been in media sales for the last uh, 15 years or so. Oh, that's so, so exciting. So. You know, we're hoping to have Kim as one of our anchors of a <laughs> new show starting in August, and this is fantastic, <laughs> because uh, she has so much knowledge, so much, so much understanding of how this all works. Works, whereas Sydney and I were just we're just starting out, huh? <laughs> well, no, I don't think so. <laughs> I just like to talk. I talk too much. <laughs> Sydney, your your turn. Oh, my turn. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, uh, um, we have to say, but I do have to interject. Uh, she mentioned about Sydney at resetyourlifeforgood.com. But if you happen to go there right now, she was using that no, website. No, that was my email. Well, that was your email. Okay, yeah. just don't go to resetyourlifeforgood.com right well, now because do, it's down. It's not exactly down. There's well, explain <laughs> what it is then. Yeah, that's it. Tell um, us what it is. I'm, I'm working right, right now with a hypnotherapist as an employee. And His name is Lloyd Dyson. Yeah, and he's an American, American Fork. And uh, he does some amazing work. And I know so many people really don't understand what a hypnotherapist is, you know. And, they and take a dim view of it. Or hypnosis, yes. you know, they don't understand what that is. But it's mm -hmm. simply a way of uh, reprogramming your brain to overcome addictions or childhood mm -hmm. traumas. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just, he does incredible work. Including weight loss, too. Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. And overeating. Yeah, yeah. very successful. Yeah. Or it. changing your dietary habits. Right. I mean, there's just about, there isn't anything that I'm aware of that he can't help you change. You know, and it's done so much more rapidly. And interesting, hypnosis is gaining much more um, acceptance. acceptance and credibility. Uh -huh. In and the medical community. And yes, yeah. mm -hmm. because they're finally beginning to understand the reality and the science of hypnosis and how it works. Right. And um, if anyone's been to a, a therapist, you know that often they'll take weeks and hours and and very, sometimes it's a pretty stressful and, and involved Waiting for that breakthrough. Yeah, yeah. and mm -hmm. even going through some of those processes. I know I had su um, suffered with depression for many years. I no longer do, thank heaven. But in the process, I went through hours and hours and thousands of dollars right. worth of therapy mm -hmm. trying to overcome it. And interesting, some of the very things... Very things that worked for me. The tools. Yeah, some of the, you know sometimes therapy almost seemed to make things worse. Right. You know when you go back and rehash things and you don't really have an outlet for those emotions that it stirs up, it doesn't really help at right. all. And so I took some things that helped and got rid of all the stuff that didn't. And much of the things that helped are also involved in hypnotherapy. So interesting mm -hmm. because you want to reprogram those old faulty thought processes and replace them with good thought processes, which I did, but it took a lot of work, you mm -hmm. know, because you have to change those old neural pathways to, and let them fade out and create new ones. Well, did you know that? You can actually change your neural pathways? Reprogram? Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, it's called neuroplasty. In fact, it's a concept that's just come to light in about the last 10 years, but thank heaven, 
I think Heavenly Father helped me to learn those things before it was common knowledge that that could be done. My wife's always ahead of the curve. She's learning these <laughs> things all the time. She's constantly studying, never stops studying. She'll have several books open at one time <laughs> and read them all. Yeah, well, I just love to learn and so that I can help other people as well with the information. But the thing that was so startlingly interesting with Lloyd uh, is that rather than take months to re make those reprogramming changes, which you can do manually yourself, mm -hmm. he can do it in weeks. You know, right. he could two, three, six visits max. To see results. To see results. Yeah. In mm -hmm. fact, some people have results in one visit. I mean, it's just incredible and mm -hmm. so fun and exciting to watch. And, and, you know, lots of times when you go in therapy, you come out and you're just beat up, right. you know. Everyone that walks out of Lloyd's office is smiling, mm -hmm. you know. And they're not only reprogramming their brain, they're, uh, they're overcoming things and mm -hmm. they're feeling better when they leave than, they, than when they came in. Right. And that's just thrilling, you they're know. Even He's even helping people with pornography addiction. He does pornography right. addiction. He helps people that have been addicted to pornography for years overcome it within, within two to six weeks. Mm -hmm. And he, he, he's a very religious man. He's a very devout man. He tries to um, incorporate that into his work so that when he reprograms your brain, he's not just giving you something else to think about. Yeah. He's reprogramming it with a oh, beautiful wonderful affirmations that will help you in your whole life. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, and people just come in and tell me how much they love him. Well, what's exciting is Lloyd is so wanting to get this out there so that it benefits more people. He's putting together a monthly newsletter. Mm -hmm. And it's going to launch on August 3rd. And you can learn more about it on his website, which he calls uh, livingthemillennialife.com. Li living the millennial life dot com. Okay. Yeah, and there's contact information on there, so people can give him a call, or can email him and learn more about it. Right now, the site's under construction, but um, you know, and she's the constructor. I am <laughs> actually. I'm helping him construct his website and get his mailing list out and do some internet marketing, which is a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun to do, but as we. Um, get this in order he's he's only charging 29.95 a month for this newsletter which is worth far more than that it you know he's going to be giving away thousands of dollars worth of information and if you came in for a session a, a session costs 250 dollars you know so that the newsletter is worth at least a session and it's he's going to have a workbook uh, work pages that go with it and you can also email him and to ask him questions there's going to be a forum where the people can interact and say this is what's working for me and this. Mm -hmm. he's going to have accountability factors so that he'll have a challenge to work on and a way of, of reporting back which is always so much more effective than just throwing something 